Hi guys, it's Mary. Let's play with makeup. This I pulled out of my own collection and it was this that caused me to want to try the Sephora Collection brand. And I have it in 11.5, but I did buy the new concealer and that is in 11.5. And I'll just talk to you a little bit here while I'm putting on the eye primer, which is not Sephora. I did get a face primer from them, however. This is Sigma. Looks like I dropped the cap. What else is new? I'm like a total klutz and drop everything if you've never been here before. Along that line, for those of you who've never been here before, I need to tell you that I'm 62 years old and I have normal skin. Leans a little bit dry in the winter time, but not in the summer. The concerns that I have are a few fine lines and wrinkles. I'm getting some deeper wrinkles in my forehead and between my eyes, but they're not 11s. See, look at that. <laughs> and some slight hyperpigmentation that I deal with. A lot of the times I don't really care if that pokes through, so I prefer a light to medium foundation. I decided to go for one of their little palettes, and this one is, uh, I think that says Precious Gemstones. I do like that we have a band that will keep that shut, like if you're traveling or whatnot. And then we have a flimsy plastic thing I'll throw away. I mean, if it was nicer, I'd keep it, but it's not. But we do have a nice mirror on the inside, so I could sit here and use it to do my eyeshadow. This flips back so I can hold it in my palm. That's good. I've never used eyeshadows from Sephora before, so I don't know what to expect with this formula, but I am going to pull out a set of my Glitzy Fritzy Essential Eye Set. I'm gonna start out with the E25, which I always do, and I love that they have this shade here that I'll go for, which is kind of like my savior in the Blessed Palette. Do you have the Blessed Palette? If you don't, you should get it. Point your phone right there, and you can get it. <laughs> the best eyeshadows in the whole world. <laughs> All right, anyway, let's use that as if it was my savior to come from the crease up like I always do so that when I blend, I'm not moving my eyelids more than they should be or the least amount that they'll be. You know what I'm trying to say, right? <laughs> uh, I don't see it, so it must be a pretty compatible. Let me, let's look. Let's just see if it is that close to my savior. This one is Sephora and there is my savior. So no, they're not dupes for each other. This has more pink in it. I would say that that's more like Mac Blanc type. What say you, we swatch this before we go on any farther. So here's this first one right there two. Hmm, that felt like it had some roughness to it, like some glitter is in it. So there's the first two. Let's get my handy dandy magnifying glass that has a light on it and see. Oh yeah, that thing is loaded down with little microscopic sparkles. Now let's start here and come and get these. Here's the next two. Kind of looking promising. I hope that this last one here doesn't feel gritty. Mm, I don't know. Um, I'm gonna put one of them up here because I want to keep it all on my palm. Yeah, palm. <laughs> oh, that is like a really olive green. And then this one here. Oh, I like it. I like it. Let's look at it. Yeah, it's loaded <laughs> down with those sparkles. Okay, I'll tell you what. If you've been here a while, you know I have no tolerance for this nonsense because it's just gonna get all over my face, but I do still wanna play in it. So let's get the NYX glitter glue out and tap it right here where I'm gonna put it. I can't find it. 20 minutes later. I think I'll just wait a second to put that on. Let's go ahead and do a crease color. First, we're gonna start right here. I'm gonna dip my E25 in that tannish color and I'm just gonna build it in here. Not a lot of pigmentation on that one. Okay, it's kind of soft. It could be argued that it's because I already laid down a color and it's on top of it. It shows up a little, which is gonna be okay because I just want this right here in the transition. 
Let's go right there in that olive green. And I'm just going to take the same brush and right in the crease, right with that other color. Oh, I don't know. It just takes a little bit more building up. There we go. Yeah, you just have to get a lot more of it than I'm used to getting. Cause you know, I'm used to using my own palette, which you don't have to keep going back into. You get what you want pretty much right off the get go, as is the case with Sydney Grace eyeshadows. But you can see that if I go in a couple of more times, I'm there. Grab the E35. That's what I use it for is this to kind of blend out and fade a little bit. E36 and go into this darkest green color and I'm gonna load that up here because it did seem to take a little bit more. Now watch this won't. And then I'm gonna just tickle that right out here on the outside. And I do mean the outside because I'm gonna put some glitter uh, glue from NYX across the rest of my lid. But that, that takes some build up too. So I'm going to say that if you are the person who likes to build it up slowly, you may like these eyeshadows because you do have to go in a few more times and it is rather, you know, light. So I don't think you're going to get an overabundance of shadow to begin with. Here, let's get some of this NYX glitter glue. I think I can just take a little across here and hopefully it's going to hold on to these little sparkles. Back into that dark color again, I want to get it, look how much I've gotten in this brush. I mean, it's no longer inside of the tips of it, but it's all through it now. Okay, that is darkening it up. I'm going to use the E55 just so we can see what happens with a brush. I'm going to put it right here. If this is kind of muddying, I don't like that. I'm going to switch to my finger and I'm just getting that metallic-y kind of green with the sparkles on the bottom. And I don't think there's enough differentiation here with these colors. So what we're going to do is bring the lightest one because I want some contrast here. So I think what I'm going to do is take the lighter shade and come up in the inner corner, but over the top of the one I just did. Man, that feels gritty. <laughs> There, that's better. Now I've got some contrast going. I've told you guys, I don't know how many times that I like the Sephora 12 hour, but I don't have this color. And this color is T-Rex. It's that same dark green. Oh my goodness, I've already got fallout <laughs> underneath here. Okay, I don't wanna go in the tight line because I've got a different pencil for that. So let's go in the waterline and see, can we tell this is a green? Now, this is not my favorite pencil for doing this. I don't think that they stay a long time, but through the lash line it would. You should be hearing the trash truck about now. He's on the other side of the road. I decided it's life, you know. <laughs> That's real life. Can we tell that's green? Here's why we can be happy that there is this rubber band thing on here because once you take this palette and bend it back like that, well, <laughs> it's gonna keep popping open. So that's why the rubber band. All right, now this eyeliner from them I've never used before. It's their long uh, wear coal in black. And oh, that's a that looks like it might be kind of hard. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> That's not as creamy. Let's try. I'm going to come in the tight line with it. Uh, usually coal black liners I like to do this with in the tight line. Even if I'm not going to wear eyeshadow, I'll do this because I want my lash line to look thicker and fuller. And even without mascara, you could do that. Be careful so that it doesn't transfer down. Okay, it is not very creamy, but it's also not hurting. I probably should have done this first because now I won't know if it's transferring down because T-Rex is down there. Let's move on to mascara. So I've been seeing this whenever I'm at Sephora on their website, the size up. Let's look at it. It's a nice, almost like an hourglass kind of bristle wand. I'm going to use an eyelash curler to curl my lashes up initially, but then I'm going to use 
the uh, heated one to fix them in place, you know. Keeping in mind that a lot of mascaras, it takes like a week to get the best results out of it. And with no primer, let's bring that over here. And then also coming on the back side of my lashes, somebody mentioned a couple of videos ago, I think, how Mel used to do that. She sure did. I mean, I think a lot of us do that. I do remember Mel saying that out loud on her channel. <laughs> For those of you who don't know who I'm talking about, I'm talking about my BFF, Mel Thompson, who passed away a couple years back. She had the most beautiful eye looks and the most beautiful eyelashes, and she really took her time. She doesn't do like me and just slap it on. <laughs> she took her time. I mean, we would have entire conversations and the whole time that we're having this 40 minute conversation, Mel's doing her eyelashes with her mascara. <laughs> okay, it, Pita, Pita, <sighs> coming in here now with a second coat and it seems to build okay on top of itself. This would be a more spectacular looking lash if I didn't have such dark eyeshadow on you know, it would show up better. But so far, it seems to, like it's pulling the lashes into mono lashes. So we're gonna have to take this doodad and come through there. Okay, just off this initial use, you're gonna get more bang for your buck maybe if you stick at the drugstore with a brand like Maybelline. I might come back to that in a little bit and get another coat, but we're gonna move on for right now. This is the Smooth and Blur Primer. Let's get these off and let's do this. Since it's a blurring primer, I'm coming over the top of my moisturizer. It does feel like it's got silicone in it, so I, I feel like it might pill over the top of, yeah, it is, it's pilling. Hang on a second, I'm gonna wipe all of this off and take care of the sparkles that are down here, and then I'll be back. Okay, I did wipe all of my face off, and a lot of times these cameras won't pick up what a 10 magnification mirror will, but I have sparkle all under my eyes. I do wanna give that a chance to set down a little bit before I go in with the foundation. Okay, I'm gonna do the concealer first, and we'll see. <laughs> what's gonna happen, especially since now we have sparkles. Here I can see them in through here. Just using the warmth of my fingers on this first. And it's, I'm gonna say this is full coverage. Man, that's thick. She thick. Where's my Kinsabia sealer sponge? I'm just gonna like take a little bit of setting spray here. And let's set those sparkles in place. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little star. Possibly I'm using too much of this. This is one thing that's good about using a product, like when we do that in the Glitzy Fritzyville basket for 30 days. That is the most excellent way I feel to know whether or not a product's good because the first time you use it, you know, you might do it wrong. <laughs> but then after using it for a little bit, you discover a better way that it looks good on you so it's not a total fail later. Let's move on. I'm gonna go ahead and put the foundation on. So let's give this a good shake because it's been in the drawer for about a year. <laughs> Probably about that long. We'll do two pumps. Not necessarily gonna use all of it, but you know, oh, maybe we will not be using all of that. <laughs> I'm just gonna dot it around my face and come in with a sponge. So that's my preferred application. And I've also got their powder. Actually, I've just, I've got a whole face. So we'll get to try their powder over the top of their foundation and see how that does. Put a lot right here. This is one of these foundations that's more thick, so I'll actually like better coming in with a brush first and then going over it with a sponge because it's not wanting to move just using the sponge. You ever get a foundation like that? It's just a brush kind of foundation. You just need to use a brush 
and then you can lighten it up a little bit. A little bit, a little bit. I don't feel like I need to review the foundation because, well, <laughs> I reviewed it last year. So this is the translucent uh, setting powder of theirs. Let's put some in the cap. And I'm gonna put some on my sponge on this side. Let's press it in like I like to do, not under the eyes. And all I'm doing is erasing or <laughs> blurring out my pores. But the other side, I'm gonna get some on a brush and just, you know what I forgot? I forgot I got this cream contour. <laughs> And I just powdered down my nose and everything. But we're going to try it anyway. So this is new from them. Let's see how ashy she is. Because your contour, see, differs from a blush in the shade. The shade of a contour should be more of a gray than, you know, the bronzer. That looks like a good contour, actually. It blends out very nice. So this is their new matte bronzer. I have a video on the difference between bronzing and contouring somewhere in, if you just search on my video page for contouring, I bet it pops up in case you're interested. Let's take this stick and put it right here, right there. Let's see, just kind of contour that jawline down a little bit. So it creates a shadow. Let's take this bronzer and I want to see if I can get more brown in the eye look. Because that eyeshadow palette just wasn't doing it for me. So this is the blush that I got. Look how cute that is. <laughs> and I'm going to take this angle brush and just get a little bit of that on there and tap it high on my cheekbones. That's where I like to go. Just right there. Just got a little flush down my nose. Just a little flush. So then I got this highlighter. Let's go on this hand and see there is very finely milled but sparkles are there. I'm gonna get a really floppy brush here so I don't get too much. Okay, so I'm just patting down there. And we'll bring that right there on top of my cheeks. Down my nose. I just want a hint of highlight on the high points of my face. See, it does give a glow, but there are finely milled sparkles in there, so be careful with that. So I got a brow pencil, which I've always been curious about. Every time I'm over there, I look at it and go, Ooh, I wonder what you're like. And then this is the Shape and Set Clean Brow Gel. Okay, so check out that. I sometimes like to take the brow setter and come through my brows first, and then I glide a pencil over the top to you know, but let's just use this like a normal person would do it, not me. <laughs> this says it's a neutral gray brown. Well, that's interesting. Let's give her a shot and try it. Okay, it's one that you gotta push kind of hard on. Because even though it's micro, it's not wanting to let me draw a hair. But if you want to do that where you're just kind of filling in and coloring your skin, so to speak. I'm really having to push hard to get any color out of this, but it's not breaking. Enough of that. Let's get this gel and try to set my brows with this interesting looking comb. So we'll find out whether or not their brow wax is something. Did it say wax or gel? Gel. I know some of you don't like that look where they're up like that. I don't either, <laughs> not, not to that degree. Um, but a lot of people do. So this is actually what's gonna tell me how it's holding. So that's what we're doing today. 
All right, so now I can see, because I'm pulling my lashes with this, or running them up anyway, that the tight line coal liner is coming out. There are better coal liners. I'll tell you what, when I put the link to the visual shopping of all of the products, okay, I will put this, but I'm also gonna put next to it the one that I would say, <laughs> go for that, not this. <laughs> Our concealer is still not settled. Fantastic on that. The only thing left is actually my mouth. I think I made a boo-boo. <laughs> I think that this color is way too dark for the lipstick I got, but let's take a look and I'll tell you what the shades and stuff are. This is the Sephora Contour Rouge Gel Lip Liner. So this is the shade Hot Sauce. Well, maybe I didn't. Maybe it will go fine with this. Looks like a more pink color. This is um, Satin Lipstick Rouge, what's the shade, 04. I guess we don't have a name. Okay, these might actually work together. I'm gonna line first. Here's the lipstick. I think that Hot Sauce and number four in this lipstick, which is the Satin Lipstick Rouge, Okay, uh, these two I think look pretty good together, don't you? This is their lip gloss and it's called um, something intense. Outrageous Intense 01. Let's put that on. It's got a doe foot that kind of hugs and it's got like that little concave and that's gonna hold a little product in there but I don't want to turn the whole clear thing this color of my mouth so I'm gonna put it here on my ring finger and tap it on. All right then. Okay, so you know what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go do my hair, and when I get back, I can tell you if that has a plumper in it or not, because I don't remember. <laughs> and then when I get back, I'll give you a yay or nay on, you know, do I regret it? Anything further to add? Like, you know, is this crunchy or not? Sort of. I'll be right back. This does have a plumper in it. It is warm. <laughs> when I say that, I'm talking about in comparison to this Maybelline, the new plumper they have out. It's a uh, plump. Lifter or Lifter Plump Max Lips Chili Pepper. I've talked about this a couple of times now where it like has, it's hot. <laughs> it's like a chili pepper. That's why there's a chili pepper on there. So a lot of plumpers are minty. Not this one. This is Sephora's milder this, I think. And because it's not as hot as the Maybelline one, I like it. I also love that dip trying to think off the top of my head, I can't remember which company, Lancome, with their liquid eyeshadows that they brought out recently. So it like holds product right here and when you put it on your mouth, see, can you see that? See that product on there? That was inside that dip. It's holding it there for you to put on your mouth. I really like this and I think we're moving backwards, aren't we? Let's start at the beginning with the eyeshadow. I told you that I like this design so that like when you're doing this and you've got this back like that to hold it in your hands that it won't shut now all the way. So that rubber band on there is a really good thought out feature. It has a nice mirror in it but I absolutely hate these eyeshadows and I will never use these again. That eyeshadow palette is $15. You can do much better at the drugstore than that. You can get any e.l.f. bite size palette or an essence palette and they're going to give you better than that. Uh, then we did eyeliners I'm going to tell you that I still stand behind the 12 hour colorful eyeliners from them. I think these are just beautiful and if you don't have the money to pony up for Urban Decay and you want different colors, then these are an affordable option. And like Urban Decay, they don't stay in the waterline. They do stay a good while, but you'll have to reapply. And I find that to be true with most eyeliners in the tight and waterline. A lot of people just use these to put and you know, their lashes. And for that, this dark green T-Rex is good. They have all kinds of other color options, but this one here, the Cole, but again, if you like to go through your lashes, it'd probably stay there. But for me, a coal <laughs> black liner is meant for the tight line and it just, no, didn't even work over the top of my eyeshadow. On the mascara, I don't know at this point if it's going to flake off there or not. 
By the end of the night, it sure had. Eyeliners had worn off, and this picture was taken with my 10 magnification mirror and iPhone, and it shows the sparkles that I can't show you any other way. But that was there before I ever stopped filming. As I've told you, the purpose of this image is to show you that by bedtime there was flaking from the mascara. Have you ever seen somebody who repeatedly wore their falsies with mascara and it just looks gross? Well, um, yeah, no. I mean, I'm just going to say, I think you can do for $12 a better mascara at the drugstore. The Smooth and Blur Primer, um... I don't like it. There's so many other great ones out there. I mean, I've even found great ones from Essence. Okay, that's so much cheaper even, and it's better. So, you know, Elf, don't mess with that, yuck. These are still, I think, a winning duo. The concealer, let's look to make sure, because it's been probably a good hour since I put this in. It would definitely be creased right now. You saw how much I used? Not one, not even a little tiny crease. A whole bunch of that stupid eyeshadows down there, but not one single crease from this. And this is a good combo from Sephora. I'm not gonna dog this powder. It's very nice. I wish it came out faster, but you know, it's a good lightweight micro finish powder. This is new from them. So it's a twist up contour. And you know, I think I'm going to set this aside so that I can put it in the next Fritzyville basket and use it for a solid month and see, you know. But I think it did a really good job of contouring without getting too out there. The bronzer and blush both get a thumbs up from me. I like them. I don't find this and it is in the shade Sunkissed Haze 00. I don't find that to be too orange. And this is Flirted Up 06. And this is... I thought a very nice flush of color. This, however, no, I, this doesn't have all the sparkle of the eyeshadow. <laughs> so, you know, it might make a good eyeshadow that would last a long time for you. <laughs> it's not the end of the world, but it's not something at 62 that I would reach for as a highlighter. But for my brows, this doesn't look bad, I don't think. <laughs> I don't think this looks bad just coloring in the front of my brow. Um, and the color is good. I like this color. So initially while I was using it, I was thinking, no, throw that thing away. I don't even want it in my collection. But, you know, I could see me using this in conjunction with a few other products, like as a first in to get this behind where I would draw hairs. But I don't hate the way my brows look today with this. So maybe this actually isn't as bad as I thought. There's a spoolie on the other end. So, hmm, I think it warrants more usage. I think we'll put that aside too. This gel, I like it. It's not got quite the hold of 24 hour brow setter, but it's got a nice hold to it. It's got pretty good movement actually for as stiff as it is. I think this is a good little uh, brow gel. And I, in particular, I like its little brush. So what a surprise. And you already know I love this, but I also love this lip liner and this lipstick. I think they look beautiful together and they were both very easy to use. This lipstick feels yummy on your mouth. So if you like satin lipsticks, this one is a good one. This is number four and the liner that's with it that I initially thought was gonna be too dark, but no, it's not. It's called Hot Sauce. All right, leave me your thoughts below, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.